Hello everybody, today I'm going to share with you this interesting floodlight. If I remember correctly, the company is Econol Light, but the um, correct one will be in the title of this video if that is wrong, but we'll also see it when we open it up. This is a PAR 30 70 watt metal halide floodlight. Quite interesting, I got it at the ReStore for $5, brand new. Um, it's obviously in really good condition because it is brand new. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at it. Here, first of all, we have this uh, notice which just tells us that the ballast is a multi-tap ballast. And to make sure that you have the correct voltage selected when you wire this fixture up. Now when I actually first got this fixture, it was only connected to 277 volts. So I had to rewire it, which is really simple for 120 and they even gave me an extra wire nut for doing that. So that was really simple but first let's go ahead and take a look at the floodlight assembly. So as you can see we have a PAR 30 floodlight bulb inside and to access that this is a very dark black we need to use one of these here and I'm trying to remember what size it was. Let's see if I can guess correctly here. Yep, that's the right one. So let's go ahead and loosen this up on that side. And we also want to do the same thing on the other side here as well. There's two of these screws. You just loosen it up and it comes right off. There's no twisting involved. It's a little bit dirty, but uh, that can all be cleaned. So in the inside here, we have the bulb itself. So I found the easiest way is just unscrew it like this, and then they give you these thumb holes on the side to take the bulb out. <clears throat> now this is actually the first floodlight version of a metal halide bulb I have. So this is quite interesting. It's a Philips 70 watt metal halide flood. Camera's having a hard time focusing on this surface of the bulb. But hopefully you can make out some of what it is showing. But this is a very nice bulb. Like I said, one of the first ones I've had. Inside, we can see the pulse rated socket as well as the fixture that surrounds the bulb to keep it safe. As you can see this cone can come off by loosening two more screws and this sticker basically tells you that you cannot use a regular ED shaped metal halide bulb. You should use an actual PAR 30 flood bulb. So we'll screw that back in there. And the cover just goes back on like so, right on the sides. And we tighten it back up. Not too tight, just enough to hold it in place. Now, I don't know if this fixture is meant to be used by being mounting or mounted on a wall, or if it is supposed to be used as a like an uplight for landscape lighting or something to that nature. It is a very nicely gasket, uh, gasketed for keeping water out of the whole fixture. You can see the gasket around here as well as there's gaskets in here as well. So I'm guessing it could also be used as an uplight for landscape lighting, but probably Mostly it's supposed to be used for mounted mounting on a wall or ceiling. So, let's go ahead and we'll open it up a bit more here. So we can see the ballast compartment. I believe that should be enough, and it is. So, the top assembly comes off to reveal the ballast, capacitor, and igniter. So let's see here on the bottom. Oh, of course, this top assembly can be unplugged for easy mounting. 
but it also gives us the opportunity to see the information here up close. There we go. We can see the total watts of the fixture is 88, where the lamp itself is 70, so there's obviously some ballast loss there. And yep, it's Econolite. You can go to their website. I was visiting it earlier today, and uh, mostly all LED now. And some more information on the other side. So very cool. So that's the top assembly. I like that they made it that you could unplug it for easier installation. <coughs> Inside the ballast compartment area we have, let me see, the sticker's really hard to see, but it's in there. I'm going to see if I can read off the manufacturer, but that's kind of hard to do. But I'm sure it's some, uh, it's non-generic. It's a quality ballast, I'm sure. Here we have our capacitor. Here's a sticker that tells you that it's wired for 277 but inside there is the capacitor and on the other side we have the igniter it says advance on it so I'm guessing it's an advance ballast as well usually it's all matching parts oh there's some better lighting yep it's an advance ballast you can kind of see down there a little bit better but overall, a very compact design for this fixture. And it just barely fits in there with the curvature of the cover. So a very nice compact design. And on the bottom we have our mounting bracket here, which unscrews from the inside. You can see the one screw down there. And there's one on the opposite side as well. So you'd mount this bracket first, then put the ballast housing on, and then you can finally put the light on that. And again, we have a very thick gasket here at the bottom for watertight resistance, uh, whatever. Very cool. So, let's go ahead and put it back together. All you have to do is as we saw before, line up our two connections here for the bulb assembly. And I like to just tuck that down there, make sure it's out of the way. Okay, so there's the fixture itself put back together. Let me go ahead and grab a cord here. This is just one of my test cords. It's not grounded, but oh well. I've already tested the fixture and it does work without any shorts, so we're not too worried about that, just for testing purposes here. You should really twist these wires together uh, when you're doing a permanent connection. But when I'm just testing something like this, I don't do that because then it just messes up the wires a bit more. And like I said, this is only temporary, so I'm not too concerned about that at the moment. Of course, we just don't want them to fall out, so make sure they're in there. That would be a problem. So, I'm going to go ahead... And I'll set it up like this, and uh, I'll kind of point it at an angle there so you can see the bulb start up. Turn off our one light here, and I have another one behind me. Let's go ahead and plug it in to our power strip, and let's turn it on. This fixture is very, very quiet. And it goes through so many interesting colors as it warms up. 
So let's go ahead and let it warm up. Okay, so the fixture is now at full brightness, and uh, just through speeding up the warm-up process, you could probably see it went through many different color changes, which is very unique. I am wondering if the arc tube inside of the flood bulb is ceramic. I believe that's what the C stood for on the bulb, uh, but I don't know. I'm sure somebody out there may have a better idea on if the bulb is a ceramic metal halide although I do believe it is, because it produces a very, very nice color. And what I'm going to do is we'll turn it and uh, light up the wall over here. Let me loosen up my tripod. And you can see the color it produces. You can also see some of the bands for, that the camera picks up, which aren't there in real life. But... Um, yeah, it has a very nice, pleasant color. On camera, it looks a little bit more green, but in person, it's a very nice, warm, white color this bulb has. So let me put the camera back down here. This thing is insanely quiet. Very nice. Now I'll point it more directly at the camera because we're going to turn it off. You can see it glow down a little bit. Very nice. Let me go ahead and set it there. Turn on our lights. And I really hope you enjoyed this little review or overview of this Econolite 70 watt PAR 30 floodlight. I think it's great quality. And uh, there's nothing really bad about it. It's very, very nice. So. I really hope you enjoyed this video and also please comment, rate, and subscribe and thank you very much for watching.